Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, everybody. Just waiting for you to see that I'm on tonight. It's nice to have you with us. Hopefully, there we go. There we go. That looks like Sister Donna's cute little face just showed up. Hallelujah, Jackie Ross. I see her daughter and son with her now that I know that that's that picture. Hey, Tammy. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Laura. Hi, Carol Burrell. I am so sorry I came upstairs and I had some extra time, so I was trying to get my office text answered, my office emails answered so that I'm not doing them later tonight, and I will be doing some because I'll get some answers back, and all of a sudden I got caught up and I was reading this one email, and I looked and it was 7.06, and I'm like, oh no, they're all going to think that I'm not going to come on tonight, but I couldn't miss tonight for nothing. I had to be on with you. So welcome, welcome. Hey, Donna, got to see you last night. <laughs> I'm glad to be with you as well, Donna. Hey, Marianne Watkins, welcome. Welcome to story time tonight. And Tammy Vert, Boys Vert, I'm hoping that Heather is there and Daniel is there and maybe Sean is even there tonight or maybe he's working, I don't know. But nice, nice to be with you, nice to have you on. Hallelujah. I got a, a cute story to read to you tonight. Um, it's called The Big Brown Bear. Um, I don't know, I like... I like bear stories. I remember growing up, one of my favorite stories was the three bears, um, <laughs> uh, Goldilocks and the three bears. And um, growing up, you know, you always wish you could find a bear and hug it. Hey, Gloria Harris, welcome. Nice to have you with us tonight. She's clapping away here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It um, matches really good with the skirt I'm wearing. I've never wore it with this skirt before, but the skirt actually has a line, a real thin line going through it of this color. So when I put this color on with it this morning, it just like made it pop. So I'm glad. Hey, Danica. Welcome, welcome. How's that little girl of yours doing? Cannot wait to see her on Sunday. Yes, Sunday. Sunday, we're going to church. Hallelujah. Hey, Shelly. Nice to see you. Tamara Smith and all the chillins are with you. Hey, Nikki. Nikki, I just sent you an, an email. I think you probably got it. Hallelujah. And um, hi. Hi, Gloria Jean Harris. <laughs> howdy, howdy, y'all. Um, it is uh, so nice to be here. Um, I had a um, sore that I got on my foot, and um, just as I was getting ready to change my house all over, um, I had them uh, bring down like all of the Christmas bins, and they were all in my dining room area, and then I had them bring down all the summer bins, and they were all in my living room area. So I brought them all down and um, I had cleaned up all the Christmas stuff and now I had to pack it all up. And so my foot ended up getting so bad that I couldn't, I couldn't stand on it. I couldn't walk on it. So I would do a little bit and then I would have to go put my feet up. Hey, Danny and Heather, nice that you're here. Hallelujah. Nice to see you, Heather. I'm going to get to see you on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. You're working on a school assignment. That's good. Keep up that good work. And so um, anyway, it, um, it just kept getting bad. So it kept prolonging and prolonging and prolonging and then trying to go to work and trying to do all of these things. 
and uh, coming home every day to my house just being in disarray. And I finally got all the Christmas stuff done and we got all those bins moved up. And then I had all these bins sitting in the living room and I finally got them all emptied out. And now I have to decorate my whole house and I am still having trouble on my foot. So anyway, my foot started doing better. And once my foot started doing better, my house, boom, shakalaka, just came together and everything was good. So I just, I just had to like, I just, I, I just had to take a break and get those extra things done because I had meetings in the evenings on some of the nights and, and, uh, working during the day and just trying to get everything done. So sometimes I just have to put on a story and I really feel bad about it, but it's what I have to do. It looks like the Robins are in the house. Hi, Alex. How you doing, buddy? Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Somehow I'm going to have to like sneak over into your area so that I can say hi to you guys. Okay. I'm going to do my best to be able to do that. So, cause I'm preaching in the auditorium Sunday morning. So, hey, Lisa, how you doing? Nice to have you with us. I hope the weather in the Philippines is good and uh, you're doing good. Hallelujah. And um, so Jerry is saying we were been inundated, and we were. We were truly been inundated. And so anyway, I was able to get my house done. And so it has it has been really nice because when I come home from a really, really busy day of work, I come home to my house being at peace again, and that just blesses me. So it was quite an obstacle course um, for a little while, but so um, I'll have to show you my house decorated for summer because I just, I think it's, um, I think it's pretty and it's my home and now like in the winter time i don't know how you guys feel with decorating but i don't know there's something about like the closeness of everything you know so like you you put out more boughs and it's it's like your house like is cozy and everything and then when spring comes i don't want all that coziness like i want I want air, I want life, I want beauty, like I want all of these wonderful things to show up that is like just, and so Jerry said, wow, our house is so open and we have so much room, but that's because we don't have as many winter things all out, you know, like the more snowmen you get, the better it is, you know. So anyway, um, I'm happy and I'm at peace and my house is together, so that's, that's what counts, doesn't it? So tonight my husband was kind to me and he made a beautiful, beautiful tuna steak and he did an awesome job with it. It was like medium rare, which is the best way to eat tuna steak. Otherwise, it's like really dry. So he cooked it really, really good. And then um, he made green beans and they were really good green beans is is one of my favorite desserts and then sunday when i was planning our dinner i went down to the freezer and i seen these cauliflower tots and i was like oh i haven't had them in a while but i already um was making julian carrots to roast in the oven and i had them all done and I really wanted to make this new zucchini casserole recipe that I found, which by the way was just off the charts awesome. It will be a regular in our house. And so I was like, no, nah, it'll be too much. So I just left it alone. And so tonight when I came home, he made cauliflower tater tots and I was like, oh, yes, I love it. Because I absolutely love tater tots. Oh. <laughs> I, I have to be careful when they're around because they're just really hard for me to control how many you just pop in your mouth. I love, 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 love tater tots. Any tater tot lovers out there love 
just love tater tots. I don't need anything on them. Just pop them in my mouth. Love tater tots. Um, so anyway, we had a nice dinner and then he didn't have a potato. So I made a potato for him really, really quick. And I just had a couple little pieces off of it. I just, I loved my dinner tonight. It was really, really good. So it's nice to have someone do kind things for you, isn't it? So I appreciate him very, very much. So um, he is definitely the author and the finisher of our face, Sister Lisa. He truly is, and he is an awesome, awesome God. So um, we will claim that, and we will stand on it. Hallelujah. So anyway, um, you guys are really quiet tonight. Um, what are you thinking of this cold weather? Yesterday morning, I got up and I said, um, hey, Google. Oh, I better be careful because it may show up on my phone right now. Anyway, I asked it what the weather was going to be for Manchester that day, and it said 55, and I'm like, yes, 55. Well, I was feeling very, very chilly, so I decided that um, that what I would do is... I would still wear my tights and I would still like wear a sweater over my shirt um, to be somewhat, you know, warm and so layered so that um, I could take some off. And so I had to step out into the garage and I'm like, oh my goodness, it was freezing out there. So anyway, I get my coat on and everything and I go to the car and it was like taking the car forever to warm up. By the time I got to 107 to um, to like get into the building, I was getting out of the car, gathering my things. My hands were so cold, they were aching. By the time I got into 107, got the door unlocked, got in there, I was so freezing. My hands literally ached and I'm like, Oh my goodness, it's cold. The wind was whipping. It was for reason. Who is saying that there's supposed to be snow on Friday and five degrees? Are you serious? Oh my goodness, that is going to be cold. I did hear that Tennessee, so that doesn't surprise me. Um... <laughs> Reverend Kalinsky says, you are looking at the wrong channel, my friend. <laughs> I sure hope so. Um, but my mom, I called her on my way home from work tonight, and she said that Tennessee is having a terrible, terrible ice storm right now. So um, I didn't get a chance to watch the weather or anything. But anyway, usually what Tennessee gets Unfortunately, we end up getting here as well. So anyway, oh, five inches of snow we're supposed to get. Normally, guys, um, when Easter is um, early, um, it's not it's not an odd thing when it's like the first part of April that we will end up getting snow. I I actually just talked about that. But, um, but anyway, um, it just, you have to get that cold out of the air. So we still have too much cold. So it doesn't surprise me that we're going to get some snow. It just doesn't. Yeah, I agree, Cynthia Robbins. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Shelly's saying, sorry, guys. <laughs> Gloria. It's your birthday on Friday. It's going to snow for you. <laughs> You're going to get cloud cake. <laughs> Maybe you're going to get angel food cake. It's coming down from the angels. <laughs> Happy birthday, Gloria. I hope it is a wonderful, wonderful birthday day for you. I love birthday days. I just, I don't know. I just, I love I love just knowing that it's my special day. Um, I just, I like, I like my birthday. What can I say? Yes. 
Yes. Oh, yes. We believe it, Sister Donna. Sister Donna says, Gloria, that some flowers are going to grow on your birthday. Yes. I hope it isn't like um, I talked to you guys on story time about how, you know, you look out and it doesn't look like you planted anything, but it's still growing under the ground. So maybe that's what Donna's talking about. Yes. <laughs> Jackie's going to give you all her snow too for your birthday so I don't know if Gloria likes snow or not I know Cedric's always trying to stay warm so I'm going to think Gloria probably doesn't like it either I like the snow but now I'm I'm just um, I'm just ready for spring it's called a season. Yes, in case you're wondering, I just put the lid on my water. I do not want it to spill out tonight. So anyway, we're going to get started with our story tonight. It is called The Big Brown Bear. And please, if you're joining us and you haven't come on to say hi, please come on and say hi so we know that we're that you're here. And it makes me feel good to know that you're here and that you're uh, visiting with us. <laughs> Donna says, I like the snow when I'm sitting on the couch and saying, looking out the window and saying, oh, that looks beautiful. Let me sit back down. <laughs> yeah, it's not all that fun when you have to go out and shovel it, is it? Or clean your car off and... Especially when the the snow goes down your sleeves or down your neck. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cold. <laughs> All right. All right. So our story tonight is called The Big Brown Bear. And he is just a cute bear, isn't he? He certainly is a big brown bear. Um, what is something that you kids think of when you think of brown bears let's let's talk about that for a minute can you just put it on the screen when you think of bears what is the first thing that comes to your mind um can you think of it i always think of uh when i think of a bear as being fuzzy because his fur just is fuzzy to me and you just want to go hug it and feel that fuzzy, fuzzy fur. Anybody out there going to answer me tonight? Even you older children can answer if you want to. Anybody? What do you think of when you think of a bear? I also think when I think of a bear that it could eat me. Yes, Laura Parker, bears are usually big. You are right. You are exactly right, especially when they stand up on those two hind legs. Yeah, you want to be running when that happens. Any of you ever go up, I think it's New Hampshire, to uh, the place where they have the bears that um, <laughs> Sister Shelley said when she thinks of bears, she thinks of running. <laughs> Tammy, Tamara, she thinks of honey. Yes, bears love honey. They certainly do. Tammy Boysford says, Smokey the bear. Oh, Heather says, Smokey the bear. And Penny thinks, Hey, Penny, yay! We have missed you. Penny thinks of polar bears. Wow, polar bears are beautiful, aren't they? They're so nice. Mary Ann says, run. Anthony, you're with us tonight. Winnie the Pooh. And Winnie the Pooh, Winnie loved his honey, huh? Yes, Winnie the Pooh always had his honey jar with him. Yep, loved honey. So those are some things about bears. Bears have big teeth. Bears have big claws. Bears like fish. Um, that is um, something like in Alaska when the salmon 
are going upstream instead of downstream and the bears all get in the water and as the salmon jumps they catch those salmon and uh so bears really 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 love salmon they do so let's read about this bear tonight the big brown bear so penny this bear isn't white like a polar bear this bear is brown like a brown bear okay Danika says yogi the bear yes yogi always stole everybody's lunch and laura says sleeping being very cozy yes we had smoky the bear all where alex says scary you're right alex you are correct bears can be scary and they can be fun that bear place up there they have bears and they're like standing on barrels and the barrels are going round and around and they're going through hoops and it's always fun to watch those bears so i think it's called clark's bear something or other i went there when i was a kid so here's a picture to show you this is big brown bear's wife and this is big brown bear and he looks like he's just enjoying having a rest doesn't he now we don't know what their names are because they didn't give him a name so tonight you're going to be able to name a uh, big brown bear and you're going to be able to name big brown bear's wife so you can all pick your favorite names for these bears okay but our story says once there was a big brown bear who lived with his wife inside of a cave because bears live in caves, don't they? Yeah, they live in caves. Please, dear, she said to him one day, his wife. Run down to the brook, honey, and catch some fish for dinner. But don't you go near the beehive in the old dead tree. Remember, honey, remember what they did to you last time you went down to that dead tree. Look at him. Off he goes. He's yawning. Do you think he's listening? Huh? Do you think he's listening? Oh, Penny got to go to Clark's Bears last year and watch the bears doing their tricks. It is really, really great. And the bear's wife, while Big Bear was leaving, she lit the fire and took down her frying pan because she was getting ready to make fish that her hubby was going to bring home to her. So all of you are putting the names of the bears that you used to have. That's a cute name. His name was Brown. Meanwhile, the big brown bear walked slowly down the path toward the brook. He was just whistling a tune. <whistles> and the little birds that were flying all around, they started joining in with him. <whistles> oh, everybody was having a great time. And because Bear was enjoying it so much, he was just taking his time on this walk down the path toward the brook to get a fish for his wife to make for dinner. Of course, he had no intention whatsoever of leaving looking at that big old dead tree with that beehive in it no intention at all but before he knew it there he was 
heading straight for the old dead tree. He sniffed. Oh, oh, the good smell of a honey. And it made him walk faster and faster. Oh, the better it smelled, the faster he walked towards that tree with the beehive in it, with the honey. Oh, as soon as he reached the tree, he pushed his paw into the hive and grabbed a piece of honeycomb. Oh, his mouth was all watery with excitement of being able to eat that honey. And inside, the busy bees were making wax and honey. Oh, look at him. Here he goes. He was going nice and slow, and now he is really moving. Oh, there he is at the tree. His hand is in that tree. Look at how excited he is. Oh, all he could smell was that honey, and oh, how much he loved honey. Do you have something that you just really, really love, like my cauliflower tater tots tonight? Oh, I just kept wanting to eat them over and over and over again. Hi, Kim and hi, Faye. Nice to have you joining us tonight. But the minute they saw that big wrecking hand paw wrecking their home and stealing their precious honey, they all rushed out of that old dead tree hole, darting in all directions and droning like a million airplanes. Oh my goodness, they were everywhere. Bees everywhere. The bear yanked out his paw as fast as he can. Then he let out a big roar, roar and he ran away so fast that he left the bees far, far behind him. I mean, he was running really, really, really fast. You're right, Kim. Yikes! Look at... Look at all those bees like drone airplanes coming after him. And he's just running as fast, as fast as he can away from that tree. And they are coming to get him. Oh, wow, I'm exhausted. How about you? Alas, he caught his foot in the root of a tree and tumbled over and over and over and over and rolled down the hill and out, out, ow, ow. He rolled right into a thorn bush with thousands of prickers all over it. But swarming after him in a big cloud, the bees were ready to zoom down on his head. Oh my goodness, so the poor bear, he had to act fast. So pulling and kicking and tugging, he tore himself loose at last, leaving great big clumps of fur in the bushes. Ouch! Oh, ow! It hurts when your hair gets pulled out, doesn't it? Look at him. What a horrible predicament he is in. Wow. He ran toward the brook as fast as he could. He jumped into the water and hid there. Only his nose show him so he could breathe. Bees do not like water. They can't swim. The water was very chilly. He's shaking. Oh, 
his feet are cold. The chills are going up his back. But he did not dare move. The bees circle. Zoom! 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 We know we've seen him around here. Where did he go? Where did he go? Zoom! Did you see him over here? Did you see him over there? I mean, those bees were looking for this bear. Suddenly, they spotted him. Oh, no. They spotted him under the water. They could see his red shorts. They could see him as blue suspenders. Oh, no. And they swooped down and landed smack on his nose. Remember, it was the only thing sticking out of the water. Ouch! Ouch! He yelled. Ouch! 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 Oh my goodness, look at, look at all of those bees on his nose stinging him, saying, You had no right to touch our hive. You took our stuff away. Bad, bad bear. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. And they just kept stinging his poor nose. Quickly, the brown bear scrambled out of the water and crawled into a deep hole under the lake bank. He sat in the dark, all wet, all shivering, with his nose getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh my goodness, look at, look at, look at his nose. Oh my goodness, look at it. It don't even look like a nose, does it? It looks like a paw. Oh, his nose has got to be sore. I got stung one time by one bee and oh, it hurt so bad. I still can remember how bad it hurt. It was this finger that got stung by that bee. After a long time had passed and he was so cold, oh, he just wanted to go home and he remembered that wonderful fire that his beautiful wife had going and he thought, oh, I have got to get out of these clothes. I have got to get warmed up. But he wasn't sure if those bees were still out there. So very cautiously, he took a peep outside. He didn't see any bees. Oh, yes, he said, yes, I think they're gone. He listened. He didn't hear any bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. And of course, he couldn't smell any bees because his nose was too sore and it was too swollen that it didn't have any holes left to even smell with. So he crawled out an inch at a time as quiet as he could. And he found himself shortly in the sunshine again. Oh, he was so excited. And then he remembered that he was supposed to catch a fish for dinner. There he is. He's crawling out. He finally seen the sun, but no bees. No bees. Hallelujah. There he is sitting there. Oh, his nose hurts. Oh, and it's so big. He can hardly see it with his eyes because his nose is almost covering up his eyeballs. And then he remembers, I can't even go home yet. I have to catch a fish. 
So he knelt on a rock and looked in the water and saw a big trout. Any fishermen out there that like to fish? The trout kept very, very still. It's funny. Big Bear was just in the water keeping very, very still. So the bees wouldn't find him, but they did. And now here's a trout that lives in the water keeping very, very still. But the bear saw her and caught her with one flip of his paw. It made him feel so much better. Maybe Mama won't be as mad at me because I am going to be able to bring her home a fish. At least I got the fish that I went out for. And you know what? He was so excited because the trout even looked bigger out of the water. And the bear was so pleased he couldn't wait to show this beautiful fish to his wife. Oh, she's going to be so happy with me. But halfway home, as he was getting past the old dead tree, he suddenly heard the bees. <laughs> And they were still fighting mad. They were buzzing all around the hive. How dare he ruin our hive? Here he comes now again. We're going to get him. Oh, they were so mad still. Look at there he is. He's halfway home. He's got that beautiful fish in his arms. Look at. And oh my goodness, he's watching. Look at the big dead tree. Oh my goodness. And the bees are there. He looks pretty worried, doesn't he? And his nose is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The brown bear crouched way down in the grass and crept very, very slowly through the tall grass, trying not to make a sound, trying to be invisible so the bees would not see him. Look at him. Look at him. He's crouched way down in the grass. Oh, he's praying. Oh, please, God. Please, God. Please don't let them hear me. Please don't let them see me. I cannot handle another bee sting on my nose. Ow, ow. Even the grass tickling it was hurting his nose. Like he was just hurting so bad. When he was far away from the tree, he straightened up and raced back to his cave. As soon as he was able to get free of that bee tree, he just took off racing to get home, looking over his shoulder from, who, who, did, 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 did I see a bee? Did, did I hear a bee? But there was no no bees around. There he is. He's running. Look at that great big huge fish he's got in his hands. That's a that's a pretty good sized fish, isn't it? I think I think his wife's gonna be happy about that fish. He was so happy to be home that he went in the house and he gave his wife a great big bear hug and he kissed one ear and then he kissed the other ear and his wife was quite surprised 
by such a greeting. And he could not fool her. Because of the way he was asking, she guessed right away that he had done something wrong. Did you ever do something wrong and you tried to be extra special to your mommy or your daddy, hoping that if they found out what you did wrong, they might not be quite as mad at you? Well, oh, big bear, he's trying to get on mama's good size. And as soon as she saw his nose, she knew what Big Bear had done. She knew it. Oh, dear, she cried. Why did you go near those bees? She knew it. She knew he had gone near those bees. Look it. She knew it. Now, I do believe that Big Bear was happy to see Mama. But he was trying to get her not to notice his big, swollen, hurting nose. The brown bear had nothing to say for himself except to promise that he would never, 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 never go anywhere near the old dead tree again. You think, I think he's going to try to do that, but I don't know. Let's see. His wife put a wet compress on his nose. Then she cooked the trout and she gave her husband, because she loved him so much, even though he didn't listen, even though he got in trouble, she still loved him. And she gave him the biggest piece of fish. Wasn't she kind? Look at his nose now. <laughs> it looks like he has a baseball on his nose, doesn't it? She took really, really good care of him. And there he is. And look at that's all that's left of the fish. Can you see it? He ate everything. And look at him just rubbing his belly. And he's back to smiling again. Ah, oh, because he's got Mama Bear. And he just had the best fish dinner. And even though his nose is still throbbing quite a bit, he's a happy bear to be home. Ah, oh, he said, it's the best trout I ever ate, said the big brown bear. But way down deep inside, he wished he had some of that nice honey that he could have ate for dessert. Oh, my goodness. I have a feeling. He's going to get stung again. How about you? There he is. There he is. He's He's got his nose all wrapped up. It's all hurting. And he's thinking again about how to get some of that honey. Oh, I wish I had some for my dessert. <laughs> Isn't that a great story? I love that story. There are things that I just really, really like. And I remember when I was a little girl, I would get in trouble for doing that. That reminds me, I didn't get in trouble for it. But my mother, when I was a little girl, it seemed like the thing was like gigantic. But when I got older, she showed me the pot that she would put these donuts in that she would make homemade. And it wasn't that big, but me as a little girl, it seemed humongous. And so I should get my mother to make me those donuts again. I'm going to ask her if she'll do that. But one of the, the snacks that my mother would make for us kids was she made these donuts. They were like plain donuts. And then she would sprinkle on them cinnamon sugar. And so us kids, 
We lived in a house that had like backs, a back stairway. It had a front stairway and a back secret stairway that would come from the upstairs and you would go down and it would bring you into the kitchen. Well, on the bottom of where the stairs was, there was a little pantry. And when you went in there, that's where this crock was sitting with a lid. And so us kids, we'd sneak down the stairs or if we were out playing, we would sneak in through the door and sneak into that hallway and we would take donuts out of it. So, you know, one day I was talking to my mother and I said to her, you know that we used to always go in there and sneak donuts, right? She goes, of course I did. I was the one who kept filling it up for you guys. She goes, I knew you were snacking on them. That's why I made them. And I remember those donuts. Oh, they were so good. But I don't ever remember my mama ever saying to me, you cannot have no more donuts. They just were always there. I got to talk to her. I wonder... I wonder if, um, I agree with you, Danny. I do not think that this bear learned his lesson. I just believe he's going to get stung again. You are absolutely correct. I do believe that. But anyway, um, I got to get her to make me those donuts because they were so good. They weren't real big around, I remember. They were just little with a little hole in the middle. Oh, they were so good. And they were homemade. She did an awesome job. She did. My mama was a very, very good cook. I was actually talking to her about that the other day. Um, because I remember a lot of the dishes that she made for us. My favorite dish, favorite of all times, that my mother would make for us for dinner was macaroni, fried macaroni and hot dogs. And so she would boil the macaroni and then she would put some oil in the pan and I think she put some butter in there too and she would put onions in there and saute them. I wonder if anybody else has ever ever had your mama make you this or maybe you make it and then she would take and cut up hot dogs in little pieces put them in and cook them, and then she would add in the pasta, stir it all around with some pepper and some salt. Oh, it was totally amazing. Every once in a while, I get a hankering for that, and so I will try it. Yes, my mother makes the best potato salad. You are absolutely correct. Yep, you are absolutely correct. Um, she does make really good. She makes really good American chop suey. She makes the best banana bread in all the world. She makes the best chair, um, pear, yeah, chair, pear cheesecake. Yeah, she, she's a good cook. My favorite meal that my mama makes, and I ask her to do this lots of times because she always makes me a special, um, birthday dinner. That's my birthday gift. And so my favorite is when she makes roasted chicken with her stuffing, mashed potatoes, and carrots, and gravy. Oh, that's my favorite meal ever right there. So I always get excited when my mama makes that for me. She makes hummingbird cakes. She's she's a good cook. So, and I'm glad that she's my mama and she makes me special things. So that's good, isn't it? Yeah. I like to cook and do special things for my mama too. So I'm always packing her up leftovers or if we have a dinner and I really like it, I'll make a plate and take it over to her. Yeah. It's nice to bless people, isn't it? It really is. And when I think of all the kind things that my mama has done for me, I feel like that's the least that I can do is to bless her. So you youngins out there, you remember to bless your mama, okay, and be extra kind and do special, special things for her. Mamas don't, don't require a whole lot, um, 
but just giving them a hug or saying, I'll help you with the dishes or let me help clean up tonight. All those little things help like cleaning up your room. So when she goes in, she's like, oh my goodness, you cleaned your room. Awesome. Yeah. So there's, there's all kinds of little things. Even you doing good in school blesses your mama because it's one less thing she has to worry about. So I try to do things to bless my mama and thank her for being my mama. So that's good, isn't it? Well, I hope you enjoyed story time tonight. I am going to tell you that probably for the next two weeks, this next coming Tuesday and then the next Tuesday, um, I will be having Lauren put on a story. So if there is a particular story that I've read that you would like her to put on, if you let her know, she will do her best to find it because we've saved all of my stories. I don't think any of them have erased yet. So if you had a special story that you liked, can you just send the youth department a message and say, could you find this story for me to read? And it will be first come, first serve, okay? And uh, so that's really important um, that you remember that, okay? So if there's a special story you would like, so this next Tuesday and the next Tuesday, and then I will be back the first Tuesday in April to read to you. I have some things that I have to do, so I'm letting you know ahead of time um, that I will probably not be reading to you. If I do get a chance to, I will definitely um, come on, but I have some things coming up. So just giving you a heads up, okay? I'm doing everything I can, but sometimes it um, this pastor's life gets really, really, really busy. So now as we're like more getting back to the normal, um, things are starting. Like our office comes in every day now to work and our workload is getting heavier again. And then with all the restrictions, some work is harder to get done because other areas are not fully up and running yet and we have lots of projects going on and so all those things it's just the life in the day of a pastor okay so anyway just so that you know um check in stay connected hey danielle nice to have you join us tonight nice to have you with us so uh don't forget and um it's been a joy being with you tonight. It's nice that it's lighter longer at night. And even though when I wake up in the morning, I still have sunlight coming in my room. So I love that. And But I do like that it's lighter longer. Sunday seemed like a really long, long day. Yes, Laura. Um, we are really happy that we are opening our church up Sunday morning. You kids... Get to go and be with your friends in Sunday school. Got some really fun things planned for you that morning. Our parents get to come to church and uh, just be able to be parents for a little while with uh, no responsibility. That's going to be a blessing to you. And I believe that God is just going to move in a mighty way. I'm happy that um, we're going to be opening our altar up again, and we do have like some of those restrictions still, but Serenity, I am excited that I'm going to get to see you because I want to see if you got your teeth back or not. I have been so concerned about your teeth <laughs> getting back in your mouth. And um, so you are the most adorable little girl and I'm sure that you're looking more like a young woman every day. And I'm just curious if you have grown to the point that you are taller than Grandma Green yet. Because that's a really good possibility. And uh, your Aunt Stacy, I'm just wondering, are you taller than them already? I sure hope not, but I know you're taller so I can't wait. So I'm going to have to sneak over. I just know I'm going to have to sneak over Sunday morning 
and just see you guys for a few minutes. I won't be able to stay long, but almost she's as tall as Grandma Green. Oh my goodness, serenity. I cannot wait to see you. Yes, it's going to be beautiful. So anyway, it's going to be um, a great, great day. I know it is. Uh, God's going to bless us. It's going to be nice to just see each other. I um, I believe that we're going to uh, Donna, I just love that little dog that that you have used this morning. He's just too cute. Um, so anyway, we'll have time to fellowship. And I hope people aren't nervous coming in. I hope we just come in and we just fill the house of God with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Um, that's just going to be awesome, I think. So um, looking forward to seeing you Sunday morning. And right now, we're going to get ready to give all of our friends a great, big, huge hug. I love you too, Danica. Love you bunches. So are you ready? Okay, get your hands out. Collect everybody in. you got to make sure that you're, these fingers right here, can you see them? got to make sure that these fingers get all the way to Lisa in the Philippines so that we can get her into our hands. Get her in. Get her Get her in your hands. There you go. All right. Got them? Got them all cupped? Okay. Let's get ready. One, two, three. Oh, drop them in your heart. Did you miss anyone? Nope. All of mine are there. Don't have, don't, didn't lose anybody at all. I got Sister Shelly in here. I got Sister Donna. I got Laura Parker in here. She lives a long ways away too. I got Danica. I got Jackie, I got Danielle, I got Nikki, I got a whole, I got all of you. I got everybody right in my arms. So on the count of three, we're going to give everybody the most beautiful good night hug ever. Too cute, Donna. I got you too, Donna, and I got your two little dogs as well. Tony, oh, Tony said, you got to remember me because I'm in Florida. Yep. We're hugging you too, Tony. <laughs> I hope you got me in your arms because I need a hug tonight. Here we go. Are you ready? Love you too, Latia. Okay, one. Hug, hug really tight. Okay, we got a long, long way to reach tonight. Two, three. Hug. Oh, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Ah, oh, man. Oh, I just, I love it when I get to hug all of you and love all of you. It just makes me feel so good. Yes, Gloria, I had you there too, and Cedric as well. I didn't forget Cedric tonight. He was pretty heavy, but I still hugged him. Yes. Well, tonight, I love you to the moon. I love you through the Rocky Mountains. I love you through the Colorado Valleys. I love you to Pluto and Mars and Jupiter. Through the Milky Way that always reminds me of a chocolate bar that I just love. <laughs> and all the way around the moon again and the sun. Ooh, it's so warm and lovely around the sun and right back to my heart. And don't forget, when you get in bed tonight, make sure you hug Jesus. He said, I'll come and I'll abide with you. And so he's right there with you. Make sure you tell him how much you love him. Make sure you tell him how much you need him. Make sure you tell him what it is to have him as a friend, that he's always there loving you, taking care of you. The nice bed you have, a blanket, okay? You thank Jesus, and if you got anything bothering you at all, you tell Jesus, and then you talk it over with your mommy and daddy, okay? Don't carry it alone. And if I can help you, you let your mommy and daddy know to give me a call and I will be there for you, okay? Love you all so much. Nice to have you join me again. I apologize for being late. I just got so involved in this email that I was answering that I forgot to look at the time. 
But you know what's good is I should be done all of my phone work for the day and then I just have some paperwork I need to do and then I can get ready to just chill for a little bit before I go to bed. So I just love you, love you, love you. Remember, um, I may not be able to be with you for the next two weeks. Um, if I can, I will. But right now, I've asked Sister Lauren to just put on a couple stories. If you got one you really liked, she'll do her best to find it, okay? And may God bless you abundantly, okay? I love you. Have a great rest of the week. Tomorrow's hump day. The week's halfway over come Wednesday. So God bless you. Keep doing good in school. May God press for you keep you, bless you, and uh, we'll see you really soon. Sunday morning, we'll see you. And uh, all of you that are watching, like Tony and Laura, that are too far away, Lisa, to make it to the house of God on Sunday, it will be being aired live from our church, not my closet. <laughs> okay? God bless you. Love you all. Just love you immensely. Have a great, great, great day. God bless you. See you later. Hey, Wendy. Nice to have you. Love you too. Bye-bye.